It happens every night And I ain't never met a riverboat dealer That could ever be a friend of mine I have not the Summer heat never treats me kind It leaves trouble on my mind So I'm bidding farewell Putting in my notice And I'll see you at another time This highway Does not know my name And I don't care No Right to that old hook right here. Just a white line gypsy getting out of Mississippi with just enough gas to get there. Low budget live. Not so live, and that is a song by me, written by me, sung by me, called Biloxi Blues. If you are new to the show, I still get questions about that. Still get questions about that, and that means we got new sets of eyes and ears stopping in into the Low Budget Live Bar and Grill, and we appreciate you. And if you are a low lifer that has been with us for quite some time now, we appreciate all of the low lifers. Hope you low life and some of the guns are doing good out there. Thank you all for stopping by the Low Budget Live Not So Live. This is indeed the Low Budget Live Bar and Grill, and it was grilling this weekend. I mean grilling. I had this thing fired up, boy. We were we were out there hibachiing and triggering and all y'all grill companies get at me, but uh, cause we were smoking it up this weekend. We we oh man. We uh had some folks over, some good people on the third of July, and I'm coming to you. On July 6th, right now, this is the podcast for Monday, July 6th, July the 6th, 2020, baby. But on the 3rd, which was uh, yours truly's birthday right here. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. Uh, got some birthday wishes on the, on the IG and the Facebook and the text messages, but had some folks over. Had a, had a small crowd due to the COVID craziness, but we had some folks over and we cooked some red snapper up and we cooked some... Uh, pork tenderloins and we cooked a big beef tenderloin and man it was a good time made some homemade ice cream i might have drunk a little bit and it was it was a good time had some good friends and some family and it was good it was good hope y'all had a good weekend too this is always because i was born right before the fourth of july i've always enjoyed um that weekend or that time frame i know it's not obviously not always on a weekend but i've always enjoyed that it's always been real special to me since I was a kid because 4th of July is just like, I think everybody turns into a kid a little bit between the fireworks and it's just summertime and you're feeling good and you're eating ice cream and watermelon. You got them cold watermelons. I grew up in the produce business, family in the produce business. My grandpa started one, and so we always had some ice cold watermelons around. So that's what I think of when I think of Fourth of July, man. Family. So it was good. It was good. We, uh, of course, uh, it goes without saying, we missed my mom. This was the first birthday I've had without uh, her here, and it was uh, it was strange. It was strange having people around, and you just like keep waiting for her to come around the corner. It was it was strange. It was her uh, it was her birthday last week as well. Um, so we we celebrated with a little bit of a heavy heart, but we know she would want us to uh, to carry on and, and to uh, have a good time. So this weekend was, uh, it was special. It was really special. We had a great time, man. We uh, of course we we kind of get all of our fireworks shooting and things out on uh, on July the third because everybody's got stuff going on. So we we like to invite people over and do a little thing. We've done this for years. And then on the 4th, it was kind of rainy around here, but then it cleared out right before dark, and we went and got some more fireworks because, I mean, I ain't scared, you know. I ain't scared, but when we showed up, we were them folks. We showed up at 8 p.m. to the firework tent because I shot a bunch on Friday night, and I was like, let's go, let's go get some more. 
and uh, me and my man Weston, we loaded up in the truck and we we drove to town and uh, went to a friend of ours that's got a really nice firework stand every year, and they were basically down to sparklers and uh, pop, the pop and snaps or whatever snap pops that you throw on the ground and some firecrackers. And we blew up some apples and some things, much to the triple threats uh, disapproval in the front yard. But I'm gonna say this: everybody been getting that stimulus check, and from what it sounded like in this just surrounding area out here in the country where I'm at, it sounded like they just spent it all on them fireworks. I, I'm pretty sure that they uh, they spent every bit of the stimulus package for the United States on fireworks. And I've seen videos from around the country, and I know y'all know what I'm talking about. And, uh, and if you did that out there, God bless you, because it, it was just awesome. Like, there's just fireworks everywhere. We, we, we've we never seen our neighbors, a lot of our neighbors shoot fireworks. Dude, there was, it, it sounded like a, a war zone out here until way after 11 o'clock. <laughs> they were going cannons. Them big old deep, you know, them big deep bass ones. You know the good one. Y'all know the expensive ones. You know what them expensive ones sound like. Not the ones that are on the ground. It's like, bzzz, that shoot up about this high. And there ain't nothing wrong with them. I like them. But them that are like, and then you hear the snap, crackle, pop at the end. Them some, that's some old, them old biggins. Them that you know, you're like, my man doesn't spend about $75 on just that, on just that shot. That's something else. Fireworks are so damn expensive. I say every year, boys, we're going bigger than ever. And then I get there and I'm like, no, we ain't. <laughs> but I feel like a lot of folks took that stimulus money up there and were like, oh, we're doing it all right this year. Load them up. Put them in a truck. Put them mortar shells in a truck. But uh, it was awesome. So... July 6th, though, we're we're recuperating. We're recuperating from eating bad and drinking bad and shooting fireworks and staying up too late. Had a good weekend, though. Hope hope all of you did, too. In this crazy world we're living in right now, you know, it's it's certainly... um, It's just bizarre, man. Everything, these cases are going back up and the media's freaking out and we're shutting stuff down again. And, um, you know... It's scary time. Don't even know if the kids are going to go back to school. And uh, I don't know. I think we all need a little taste of normalcy. And we we get now. Like I said, Fourth of July was a was a taste of that. It was a taste of that. And it looked like a lot of Americans celebrated the way they always would, or or indulged a little bit more. And uh, a lot of people are just carrying on with life. And I, I mean, I don't know that that's not the best policy at this point. We got to just figure our way through this thing and be careful, but figure our way through this. So a good friend of mine was here this weekend and his wife works at a hospital and she's in the administrative part of that hospital, really smart, smart person. And, and, uh, and she said, you know, that, that the hospital in particular, she was working at, it's got a lot of cases and it's got a lot of people. And she said, it is, uh, it is definitely, you need to be careful, you know, be careful. So uh, it was interesting talking to her about it because you only get, you know, we get fed what we get fed, right? So, uh, and, and, and I do believe the media wants total ridiculousness with this a lot of times. And it's just uh, it's a lot of people kicking it. A lot of people. So I do have friends. I have had some friends and family that have come in contact with it that have had it. And, uh, you know, they bounce right back. So. I know there are people that are less fortunate, and there are people that do need to take more precautions than others, most likely. But we're in a weird we're in a weird place right now, and man, it's uh, it's crazy to see. Um, what is not crazy to see is the fact that this bottle, this bottle right here, is always on the low budget bar and grill, always, always. Startron bringing you L B. L for going on three years now and the fine folks at star bright star trying we appreciate them so much if you don't know what this is it is an enzyme fuel treatment that will kick ethanol right here say ethanol is coming up and it just ah, gets it out of there i'm all about sound effects these days by the way guys by the way i'm all in with sound effects got some good comments on the sound effects last week um but this will take care of ethanol in your in your if you're putting gas in your boat and it's sitting for a little bit, you better 
better get you a drop of this. Uh, if you're running older outboard engines, ethanol is hell on those. So this will kick it in the teeth. Use it in your weed eater. Use it in your chainsaw. Use it in your side-by-sides, your four-wheelers, your vehicles. Right here. This is going to treat 256 gallons, this bottle right here. They also make a lot of uh, cleaning products at Starbright. Y'all have seen them. Going to keep you looking good. We appreciate those people bringing you Low Budget Live. Another little quick sponsor plug, but just good people. These people are, are more like friends and family than sponsors. Same with Starbright. Uh, the fine folks at Eagle Call. Check this sweet. I got this awesome Fourth of, Happy 4th Fourth of July uh, card from these guys that they sent out in this swag new little cup that I'm having my morning drink in. This is a non-alcoholic cup. Alcoholic alcoholic beverage right here But this is Otterbox is making a little tumbler deal Pretty cool But people at Eagle Call are um, I've been with those guys for a long time They're historically uh, awesome to work with And that showed up right there before the weekend So cheers to those guys um, Now let's talk bass fishing Shall we? Should we talk some bass fishing? I think so For those of you that are like don't talk about anything but bass fishing. Here we go. Here's the bass fishing portion of the show. I do like to get stuff off my chest, though. Y'all know that. I like to just ramble and talk, and that's what this is for, for me. I enjoy that. I enjoy the rambling. So, Bass Pro Tour. Do y'all want sound effects? Bass Pro Tour. The Bass Pro Tour starts this week in Sturgeon Bay, Wisconsin. This tournament was originally supposed to be in New York. Good old New York. Uh, COVID York, as we're calling it. Nobody's calling it that. I made that up. Uh, it was supposed to be up on Lake Champlain, I believe. And they dipped out of there. They told their anglers, kind of, you know, short notice, whatever. But that's just the nature of the beast right now in this world we're living in. But they moved it to Sturgeon Bay, Wisconsin, to avoid having any craziness in New York and uh, – Restrictions and things So Moving it They uh, FLW BPT Major League Fishing MLFLW Also moved The Toyota Series From New York I think it's supposed to be On the St. Lawrence River Actually And they moved it down To Ohio To Sandusky Bay Which is a Wild fishery Most of the time As far as wind and waves Um so that one's going to be interesting to see for the first Northern Toyota series. But uh, that, so that one's, that one, I think that one starts this week too. But BPT Sturgeon Bay, I think, I think that rescheduling is a, is a power move just from a fishing standpoint. Champlain's awesome. Champlain is awesome. But, Dude, they got giants at Sturgeon Bay. <laughs> I mean, freaking giants. And I know those guys are probably bummed because they probably had houses booked and yada, yada, yada. But I think Sturgeon Bay is the better move. We'll see. It gets nasty, you know, but so does Champlain. If it if it blows, it could be, you know, a miserable event, I'm sure. But uh, And who knows weather-wise when you're dealing with the Great Lakes and different things. But um, I think this is this is an interesting event to watch for sure. Um, for a lot of reasons I love all Basically all smallmouth events I'm not sure what their weight minimum Will be this week But I've never been to Sturgeon Bay I've always wanted to go So I'll be uh, I'll be watching this one for sure I think this one will be uh, I like seeing the spinning rods come out And and uh, guys like Cody Meyer Like you know guys like him And uh, Aaron Martins is back this week You know uh, Aaron's finished his treatments and he's going to be fishing this week. I think that's a storyline we all need to be watching for sure, supporting Aaron. And, um, man, how cool would it be if he went up there and won that sucker on some light line? It would be awesome. It would be so cool to see. And uh, seeing Aaron ring the bell, uh, which I got to see my mom do uh, when her treatments were over in the first round that she went through. Uh, it was very cool. It was very cool. And uh, he's a fighter, and he's a strong dude. So, can't wait to see him up there. The the Brent Ailers of the world. These guys, they're all so freaking good at this point. But um, I think that uh, this is going to be a cool tournament. It's going to be a cool tournament. If They may do a three-pound minimum or something crazy up there. Could be wild. But there's going to be a lot of fish caught if they can fish because of the weather. The overwhelming storyline for me, 
I won't say, I shouldn't say overwhelming, the most interesting storyline <clears throat> for me. Let me get a drink. Ah, did y'all hear that out there? Is, will this be the last Bass Pro Tour event of its kind? The f- no entry fees, the, you know, small field, will it all go to FLW next week, next, next week, next year? Will they announce that because of COVID, because of issues, because of things? That is That rumor is running r- rampant everywhere. I'm hearing that a bunch. And it is just that. It is a, well, I want to say that, it is a 1,000% rumor. There's also rumors that they're going to pay entry fees next year if, they're, if, if the Bass Pro Tour continues. For those guys that signed up for it, I, I sure hope that it continues. You know, I hope that it does, but this could be the last one. Maybe, maybe. I'm normally not uh, a rumor spreader. Try not to be, but that is, man, that that one's got, it's got some legs behind it. it. Seems to, but we'll see. I don't believe anything until it's released in a press release, but I would think if the plan is to just move to some sort of FLW Super Tournament situation next year or, or whatever, that they would have to announce that very soon. I would think that that's got to be shared with everybody within the organization. That way guys can make decisions, you know, on what's best for them for next year, whether to be a part of Of course, it's too late in the game. You know, if you're not already fishing the Opens, you can't requalify for the Elites. And so – there's just a handful of guys trying to do that right now and get out of there, I believe. But um, we've seen a few. But I don't know. I don't know how I would feel about that. If that's where you're at, that's where you're at. And now we got the National Professional Fishing League popping up. It's going to start in March. You know, do guys go that route and fish that? Because, you know, They've announced 60 anglers, but they've still got some spots, and I think they could potentially be, you know, I think they'll feel that thing. I do. I think that they could be waiting to see what some of these guys are going to do. Are some FLW guys going to drop out and go to that? You know, we'll see. We'll see. It's a very interesting time right now. Uh, It always is. It has been since uh, interesting slash crazy slash ridiculous since BPT started, you know. It's uh, it's it's crazy, but best of luck to those guys up at Sturgeon Bay and be safe, be safe, guys. Uh, now on the bass, we're gonna talk a little bass master before we uh, get to our guest today, which is just a very special guest. So bass, they're presented a unique opportunity, and opportunity and a unique challenge, they are going to New York State, land of corona, land of strict policies and, and, and craziness. They are going to New York for four events, a Bassmaster Open on Oneida and three Elite Series up there. And... We're all looking forward to this. It's just like Sturgeon Bay. Like I said, everybody loves watching the smallmouth beatdowns, and it's kind of what we expect from these leagues in the summer because the south, the fishing starts kind of sucking, and the water temperatures are hot, and it's hard to take care of fish and keep them alive. So we slide north in June, July, August, September, typically. That's what we've seen the last few years, and it's very cool. Other than the Forestwood Cup, which was always on a southern fishery when it was hot, but it was a challenging event and fun to watch. But for the most part, especially bass, they slide up north this time of year. St. Lawrence River is always just like this beat down, a big smallmouth. Cayuga is a big largemouth lake. It's cool. These are cool lakes. Oneida for the open. I think they're going to Champlain. But they have their hands full because, you know, New York is really, I think they're checking driver's licenses and tags when you come into the deal and the cross the state line. Uh, that's what I'm hearing, you know, through the grapevine, but to for states that are, have hot spots, so to speak. And, I mean, you look at, like, the cases going nuts in Texas per the media and per the numbers and all this stuff, and Florida and things like that, and you've got a lot of guys that fish from those states coming in. And, like, I mean, are they going to get to um, 
they got their hands full. But uh, the overwhelming question to me is, should they go there? And I've heard several people talk about that this week. Should they go? Should they go? And as of right now, July 6th, they are still going. They are still going and talking. I've talked to some people there and some anglers, and I think they're going to have very, very, very strict rules about what they can and cannot do as far as crowds and as far as social distancing and as far as maybe even testing the anglers, temperature checks, actual COVID tests. And I think that's smart. From a from a press standpoint and from a organizational standpoint, I think they have to. I think if you're going to go there, should they still go? Yes, one thousand percent. And here's why. This is my opinion. Should fishing tournaments still go? On? Yes. Should Sturgeon Bay go on? Yes. Yes. Yes, they should. Yes. Um, you're not packing out a baseball stadium. You're not you're not filling an arena full of people. It's not a concert. People losing their minds over stuff like this. And nobody wants to be the first one to step out there and do it, right? That's that's the biggest problem due to shaming online or cancel culture. Bassmaster has a huge crowd in Waddington, New York, every time they go. If they were to have that crowd, dude, they'll be all over freaking mainstream media the next day. Bass fishing, killing people. And that's what it'll be. But should they go? Absolutely. And here's why. Um, rescheduling is a nightmare. They've already had to reschedule the entire freaking season. And, 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 and we've talked about this, but like BPT got a few events in on them in the beginning. And then one, after kind of the world came crumbling down, they fished fork and then they shut her down. And they shut her down. But Bass had one freaking elite, man. One. One elite. And the Classic. Got the Classic in literally at D-Day right there at the line. Then everything fell apart. So I feel like, and their rescheduling was great. Into the fall, some really cool stuff. And I feel like it is too hard to reschedule. And like I said before, you can't come to Southern Fisheries in July and August. You can. You can, but from a fan standpoint, especially an online standpoint or ESPN2, not sure if they're going to get to do that again or where all that's headed. They haven't announced it. But from a fan watching online standpoint, you got to catch fish. The storylines have to be interesting. People like to see big weights. They like to see big fish. And they like to see the big smallmouth freak shows and things like that or big largemouth at Cayuga. So I think if... And the crowds are cut down to a minimum in any type sporting event. So I think you've got to focus on your online stuff right now, right now. And uh, they always draw big crowds. We know that. We know that. Uh, BPT doesn't worry about that as much. That's not their business model. They don't focus on crowds, and they don't have crowds, and they don't do live events. But Bass does. They have Dave Mercer up there acting a fool, killing it. But right now, I think you have to have these tournaments in New York. Or something similar to New York as far as fisheries are concerned, like Sturgeon Bay where BPT is going. But I think they have to have these events. And I think we have to resume some sort of normalcy. And I think they will go above and beyond, just like I know BPT will, Major League Fishing, and making sure the anglers are safe. That the, the I mean, I, I think you won't see any marshals at these events. I think you'll see a real scaled-down um, staff from Bass. But I think these events, and I hope that New York lets, I hope this happens. Hell, I need it. I need I need to be able to see this, you know. It's like saying, like I'm saying, I was saying with Sturgeon Bay. Have to be able to see it. So um, I love that. I love that they're going to go. Now, if you're an angler and you don't want a freaking COVID test shoved up your nose, you might not ought to fish. <laughs> but if you do it for a living – you know, full send ahead. And I know the guys are willing to go because the fishing's so good. And look, man, you aren't hurting anybody. When you're out on the water and you're out on a boat, who are you hurt? You're out there by yourself. We, we've seen, I talked to a member of the Tennessee Wildlife Resource Agency, TWRA, which is our governing body over, um, you know, hunting and fishing. My guest is texting me right now. Uh, and they said that fishing licenses are up over $2 million in sales this year over last year. So 
people are fishing, and I don't think it's fishing that's causing this these numbers to go up by any means. I think we gotta we gotta go, um, got to go fishing, and and I hope that bass gets the rest of the season in, and I hope that FLW the super tournaments. I, I hope that they get to to finish the year with all that craziness. I, I hope, I hope. <laughs> My guest today, I'm I'm laughing because my guest today is one of my brothers in arms. He is one of my best friends in the world. Y'all know him as Stupid Darian. He has nearly 34,000 people on YouTube that watch his bullcrap videos all the time, his clickbait. Uh, he's absolutely doing a great job on there. I give him I give him hell, but he is also a social media mogul in the making, I feel like. Uh, not to mention he makes sweet tea, not to mention uh, he's a pretty damn good fisherman at the same time. Uh, we're going to talk to you about several things today. I just wanted to have him on. I uh, got to see him this weekend for just a minute. But uh, ladies and gentlemen, let's see if we can get on the phone. Stupid, dumb Darian. At Darian is fishing. What, who are you answering the phone from? A damn robot phone? Yeah. Gosh. You freaking, you freaking millennials in your technology. Yeah, robot phone, baby. <laughs> it did sound like that at first. So have you got your workout in today, Pumpkin? I got my workout in this morning. And, um, oh, yeah, now I'm just ready. I'm just ready. I'm ready for the day. You're ready for this. Uh, you're ready for Low Budget Live, Not So Live from the Low Budget Live Bar and Grill. So I gave you, I gave you a great intro. You're going to want to go back okay. and listen to that. You're going to want to. As soon as this posts up, you're going to want to make sure because you might want to like pull it down, uh, you know, download it. And, and I'm, I can send you the file and use it for anything that you're trying to get. Like you're trying to sell somebody on a sponsor deal. You're like, well, this is what the media says about me. And you should yeah. plug that in. Yeah, You should plug that in. So, yeah. uh, I, no, I did. I was talking about your, you're like a social media mogul. You're a sweet tea maker. You really, you're a mogul in the making. That's what I'm calling you, the mogul in the making. Um, and you get to tell people you're friends with me, and I think that's. That's one of the, my better attributes. <laughs> really? Hey, 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 and I got like 99 attributes. <laughs> you got 99 of them, and that's one of them right there. That's that's what uh, Kevin Gates said. He said, that's just an attribute, and I got like 99 attributes. <laughs> oh, Kevin. I'm going I'm to download that later. I hadn't heard yeah, that one. Yeah, that's a good one. That's one of my favorite ones. But don't don't download what he says right before that because it would not be uh, fitting for the podcast. Okay. Okay, I'll, I'll I will yeah. not do that. Then I will definitely yeah. not do that. So you, um, it's been a while since I've had you on LBL, and and that's what I was thinking this weekend. I was like, I want to get Darian on because not only do we have something in the works right now that we're really yeah. excited about, a couple things we're really excited about, but uh, I just want to get. I think that you definitely we we definitely cross over as far as subscribers and followers a lot of times, but at the same time we have. Some people that, that don't know you as well, but for those of y'all that don't know Darian, it's at Darian is fishing on Instagram and Facebook and definitely on YouTube where he's and TikTok. He's the tick he's a TikToker as well. He kills it on there. Um, but Darian, the last time we had him on, he lives at Gunnersville, Lake Gunnersville, and his life has gotten completely out of control crazy, I feel like. Um, <laughs> he's made some life decisions this that this year that y'all if y'all follow around with his channel, you're like Wow, he's really changing things up. So, talk us through you. You put your house up for sale back this spring, and you're going to move, but you've had some snags. <laughs> we've had, yeah, we've had like a snag that was basically a break off. I mean, just basically. <laughs> you broke just broke off. your. G- uh, you said we're well, just going to retire. Yeah, we're just going to go ahead and retire. <laughs> um, yeah, so we're moving from Guntersville back to Hayden, Alabama, where our family's from. Um, you know, I hate to leave this lake, but we're still going to be about 40 minutes away. Uh, just but our, we never got to see our family. We're wanting to start a family of our own. And so getting back to, you know, our parents and grandparents to be around the babies whenever that happens, I think it's going to be important. And we found a spot on a lake, which is going to be really cool. There's a little small lake in Hayden. And so uh, that's going to be really cool to be able to be on the water actually and i think i'll be able to film more it'll be different because it's not a 
you know, worldwide known lake like Gunnersville is, but it will bring a different creativity and challenge to learning the new body of water, being more relatable, I think, to people who don't have the best lake in the country at their fingertips, which I still will in a way, but it, I won't be on it every single day like I am now. So it, I'm ex- super excited about it, fishing from the bank a little more, fishing from my kayak a little more. Um, so, yeah, we, we put our house up for sale, um, thought we had a done deal. We found the house in Hayden. The guy backed out 24 hours before our closing. It was a really, really strange situation, but um, we were not able to even keep the earnest money. It was a weird, weird situation. So now we're renting a house. We still are paying a mortgage on a house, and we're about to close on another house. So if you got some money, or if any of your subscribers got money, if they want to send them my Venmo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, Y'all go ahead and Venmo Darian, and and I'll tell you the the best part of this for those of y'all that don't know. My favorite part of this is his landlord is just a jerk, jerk big jerk. <laughs> his landlord's big a bit a big dumb animal. Uh, that in a video last week, I don't know if you saw this or not. Darian said he was going to shoot me in the foot with a shotgun. <laughs> so nice. he did say that in a uh, in his new series, The Lost Lake, and we're of course talking about Gerald Swindle, uh, Gerald who's. Really good friend of uh, mine and Darian's, but he uh, he's he's renting to Darian right now. He's a landlord. Yeah, does, he a shake, landlord. does he shake Does he shake you down for the rent money, or does does Leanne? Yeah, he does. It's weird. Like he gets <laughs> he gets um, real touchy too. It's weird. Uh, <laughs> he's like you go you go earn this rent, boy. Yeah, he has you gonna learn. So here's the thing about Gerald. So I'm I'm like a punk kid, and Gerald's like this seasoned, got tough leather hands, old grumpy man, like old tough, <laughs> like kind of like a um, kind of like an old lion, yes. like an old pack, like an old pack yes. lion, grizzled veteran. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Very much of a veteran, and I'm like a little cold, like still eating bad berries, like rot berries and stuff. <laughs> so when I move in over by Gerald, I stay up till like two or three in the morning editing videos. And I'm not gonna lie, if if any of our, if our bosses at TH were listening to this, I would hate for them to know this is the truth. But there's been days they're not listening. Don't during, worry about it. <laughs> during the week that I stay up till two or three, and I might sleep until nine or ten. I'm it just. I got to get my six, seven hours. Hi, son. It's it's COVID. It's COVID, man. So it's COVID. But so anyhow, I got in a bad routine of that. I was getting work done really late. And then, so by the way, if you move in over by Gerald and you wait and you don't wake up till ten, Gerald's already been done a lot. By 10. Like he's already up in <laughs> six, seven hours at ten. Yes. Gerald has already been up and done stuff, cut the grass and ran and went fishing and took a nap by ten. Yeah. So <laughs> I, so he's like, hey, you gotta start getting in bed earlier and start waking up early. So he has trained me every morning. I've been waking up at six, and then this week, at the start of this morning, I set my alarm at five thirty. So that's been my goal. So we're getting better earlier. So start waking up. Le- earlier. So legit, I haven't heard the story, and you and I talk twice a day, sometimes more than that. Uh, yeah. I've been saving this one. This You've is, been this saving this one. Yeah, I didn't know that he got on you for sleeping. It. That's hilarious to me. Yeah, he that's such a G that. thing too, though, right? Such that's a such a G thing. thing. Yeah. Ain't nothing but a G thing. Ain't nothing but a G thing, buddy. That's hilarious. So he's like, you better get your butt up. And I listen, man, I, I have to tell you, too, and you know this, but, like, I, I mean, I've been slipping, too. I've been staying up later, and I normally stay up during all this because it's like uh, I feel like a kid a little bit with this. I haven't been traveling. I haven't, like, Marissa and I say every Monday, like, I got up this morning and uh, about 630, and I came in the kitchen, and I just said, <sighs> like that. And she goes, what? And I said, it's another damn week of this <laughs> because it's just like it just it it just is you know it's just like this and now I feel like we're kind of slipping backwards as far as like the nation's concerned and how things are going. I think a lot of people are full steam ahead with it, but uh, trying to get back to some sort of normalcy. But it's the the bottom line is it's not normal. And for me, it's yeah. been like this extended summer vacation. My kids are here all the time, and we're just like. Yeah, we're watching movies till midnight and later, and so, yeah, swimming and eating bad and all this crap. So every day I'm like, yeah, I might get up at seven thirty, eight, eight thirty, nine. I mean, I mean, there are these days where uh, my wife and I, true, this weekend we slept until like nine thirty one morning. Like I've, I haven't done that in in freaking years. So yeah. I, I get where he's coming from because you need that. I do think it's important. I think a lot of successful people. And you're you're certainly one of the most successful people I know, and and one of the hardest working people I know. But 
um, you hustle at what you do. And I think though a lot of successful people, they get up really early. Yeah. I think. And I think the, I think the main thing about it, and I didn't realize, but I thought I was doing better by staying up late because you're getting the same amount of work done. Like if I stay up late, I'm doing the same work I would get done in the morning. The thing is, I think in the morning there's just, you get your day started so much better and it's, it just feels better. Instead of having a cream energy drinks at night to stay up late, I get up early, go to the gym. I'm back home by 7.30, so 7.15, 7.30. So some people still are even up at that point. Yeah. That's before I was even waking up before. And so now I'm wide open. But when I feel like, too, you make, you make fewer mistakes in the morning and during the day, yeah. too. Like you're sharp after you're well-rested because your mind can slip, especially doing what you know everything that you do social media-wise and – and editing video, if you you make the wrong slip and then you end up putting um, you know putting the wrong thing out there, that could that could be detrimental to you. So this yep. week is is kind of a sad week for me, and I didn't even mention this at the first of the show. I know it's a sad week for you too, but this is iCast week. And this is a big. This is we're missing. We're missing out. We I know our group text has been filled with some old videos. That yeah. Never leaked. Um, we're gonna. Yeah, this is a sad week. Yeah, this is a sad week. It, this is iCast week, right? <laughs> I just said that. I set that up. But, or is it next week? I think so. Or is it next week? No, yeah. it's this week for sure. Because when we did the Costa thing, we left right after the. Um, it was almost during. The, it was at the fourth. We were there. Was that, yeah, we were there. No, we were there. Were we there the fourth? Oh, we were. Yeah, we were. Like, I left on my birthday. Yeah, man, I'm a terrible uh, parent. Yeah, you are leaving just right in the middle of the floor. <laughs> I remember that. That was two years ago. So what Darian's talking about, and this was going to – I was going to bring this up because we got a lot of iCast memories we can talk about, some that we can't uh, on here. That we can't. A lot that we can't. But we have a good time at iCast. We see everybody. It's And iCast, for those of you that don't know, is obviously it's the biggest fishing industry show where everybody gets together. Um, and it's it's a really good time, and a lot of new products get introduced there. They really get introduced online now, though, before the show even starts. So the show's kind of becoming more and more pointless, in my opinion. Um, so this could be the beginning of the end for it, I feel like. Uh, I think, yeah, uh, you know, hopefully. hopefully. It's kind of just a crazy week. But there, well, people don't understand. I'm going to interrupt you really quick. No, go. What people don't understand about ICAST is – as a as a fan of the sport or a fan of fishing tackle or whatever it might be, you dream to go to ICAST. It's like this cool thing That's you right. see all the tackle warehouse videos. But working that show, people don't understand how long the hours are. Oh, it is brutal. It's the hardest working, or hardest working, but it's the longest time they'll sit on their feet. And like, what are the hours? Like nine to six or something? No, nah, I think it's. Or seven, or it's crazy. It's crazy hours it's for what you do, crazy. and you're shooting videos all day long. I mean, and it's a dream job. Like we're because I know people are going to comment, "Oh yeah, swing a hammer, Darian," you yeah. know, and and I get that, but it is it is a crazy week, and it's a marathon. And and what I mean by that is, you get there, you set the booth up, then the show hours are long. As soon as the show's over, you go out. Uh, to dinner with sponsors, with friends, with whatever, and you're out till late, and then it all starts over. So you get zero sleep. The classic week's kind of like that, too. Uh, it's a gauntlet uh, as well. But two years ago, this is my favorite podcast memory. Two years ago, we got an invite from Costa Sunglass. Big shout out, Costa. Um, we got a, an invite from Costa to go to Daytona International, Daytona Speedway, and fish in the lake, in the Speedway, and fish a tournament. And work for Costa doing an event there during a NASCAR race. One of the coolest things I've ever got to do. And I Didn't think you win the tournament. I won the tournament. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I beat I beat stupid fat Todd Castledine and um I forget who all was in that. Russell Cecil. Mullins. Mullins. Who else was there? I can't the guy remember. with the Nitro mask guy. Oh, Shane Lineberger. Yeah, Shane yeah, fishes the Elite. Roy Hawk. Roy Hawk. Yeah, I beat I beat those guys. It's a good time. Uh, beat them using panoptics, as a matter of fact, too, because I could see eelgrass. They couldn't. It was really funny. But uh, but we got to go do that, and then we went from there right into ICAST. I took my boat to Orlando, which was kind of wild, and I got to do a Garmin event that week where they actually released live scope panoptics that week. Got to work. Th- that was one of my favorite ICAST. Um, I think that one was a good yeah. one. Yeah. Definitely. So are you uh, are you seeing anything right now? that you are interested in bait wise because we always kind of say eh. i mean a lot of trends the trends seem to be going more and i think you'll agree with this finesse fishing which i'm all i'm here for that but fishing pressure is increasing ned rigging is huge 
but we're seeing a lot of trends go that way, I think, in finesse fishing. But is there anything you're super stoked to see or you're hearing about that's coming out or that has already been released? I don't know, man. I, I don't know. This one's kind of weird. I didn't see anything that was, like, groundbreaking, like, super cool. I can't wait to get that. I was like, there was a couple that I will buy, but I wasn't like, I can't wait to buy them. You know, it was like, yeah. so normally there's something you're like, I cannot wait to get that. Yeah. This year was a little bit, I don't think there was that that but um, a couple of them i love the rapala dt series there's some new dt colors that are coming out that look really good yeah yep. um, i think there was a um the, the skinny dt6 like a flat side dt6 oh that uh the thing that i built in his garage or whatever yep i yeah. think that'll be kind of cool i think that'll be um, a catcher um, i saw a uh I saw a Z-Man something. It kind of reminded me of a um, of a of a menace, a Strike King menace. Is it yeah. Z-Man something called the Goat series or something? Huh. I'm excited to see it. I don't know. I typically I'm not a huge fan of that elastic stuff. On I don't know. Just personally, I'm not. I just think I'm going to miss them on it. But I I would probably buy a pack of those and just try them. Um, the coolest thing I think is going on, I guess, which I have I already have one. I've been able to use it, but is that. Um, I think it's the coolest thing I've ever used. Yeah, that thing's very slick. Yeah, it came out of the classic. I saw they're, they're promoting it again for an iCast release, but I think um, Do you think we'll see? I know Minn Kota came out with their Raptor power pole thing. Um, will we, we see? Need to, we, we need to dedicate a couple minutes to that. As well. I, I, agree, I agree totally. <laughs> yeah, can we just talk about the fact that everybody just. Talk about that. Can we just talk about the fact that the fishing industry just rips? Like, they just. Everybody just. Rips everybody off. <laughs> rips everybody like, off. Like a paper rips. Yes, so, everybody. I'm a huge fan of Ben Code. I love their marketing. I love their branding. I love their products. They're innovative, and they have a really good pro staff. And I just like them. I like Ben Code. They're, they're good people. They're good people. Yeah, like, I love the whole thing. And then. And then that, they <laughs> and then they're like the same colors too. The, they're like, like the the new, it's coming. Get ready, everybody's dropping these things, and they're like, oh hey, guess what? It's a power pole blade. <laughs> the raptor, and it's like what? The what most you innovative <laughs> product. What you in do? The history of our industry. What did, What did you do? Why did you do that? <laughs> this is a terrible idea. <laughs> Yeah, I was like, "Geez." I mean, it that one that one got me a little bit and um uh, and like I said, I've always which this year I'm not running any anything of theirs this year cuz I'm I'm running a Garmin Force trolling motor, but I mean, these guys they were they came up with Spotlight. They came like the Ultrax trolling motor is I I would say in in fishing history I would say, okay, I'm going to say this. I would say that Humminbird Minn Kota have two of the top 5 greatest inventions in the history of fishing or that have changed the game. And I think side imaging was the first without question. The first thing they did. And I think a spot locking, I think the Ultrex was a game changer. Like those two things have changed changed our sport. sport. Yeah. They changed our sport. Uh, They're mapping as well, but I'll say I'll put them in the top five. As far as things in my lifetime that I feel like change the sport, I'll put I will put Garmin Live Scope in that as well, in that top five. But I think Power Pole goes in that top five. Um, what's the fifth one? I made a top five, but I didn't have five in my head already. What's the fifth one? As far as just like kick you in the teeth, this changed everything. As far as ease of fishing, technology, whatever. What's that fifth mm. one? But for me, I do think that Minn Kota Hummer, they do have two of the top five, but I think Power Pole goes almost to the top of that mountain as well because I use them every single time I go fishing. I think they're incredible. Just like that Garmin Live Scope, I think it's it's ridiculous what you see on that thing. I had yeah, a bit- I think... I think so. I think even I think if I was saying top five, I would probably put anything that's forward looking maybe in the top ten. Because like the side imaging, you have to have. I feel like if you're going to find fish offshore, power poles you use them every single day, and spot like you use it. You know whether it's Garmin's anchor mode or right, whatever. Right. You use that every single time you go fishing. Um, God, well, I, I'm trying to think. I'm, I'm with you. I'm trying to. Think I'll say I, okay, okay. I'm going to throw one out there for you. Top five. This is top five all time. You're going to think I'm crazy. Hot foot. 
Yeah, hot foot definitely. I think, and, and, and it came out before you and I were even born, but I think as far as a thing that revolutionized things and is something that we see in every single boat that you use every single day that is a safety feature, that is a ease of use feature, a hot foot, a hot foot, I think definitely goes in that top five. I had to think about that one for a minute, but I do, I do, but but that being said, the, these company, this company has been very innovative, but I think this Raptor thing is just kind of silly. And I think it's a preemptive strike because we all, the rumor is that uh, Powerpole has a trolling motor coming. Um, and it's probably a little bit like, hey, you're going to get in our world, we're getting your world again. Which they had already yeah. done that with a Talon. <laughs> yeah. It, which, you know, a lot of guys run them. Um, I've never ran them. I don't, I don't really like the design. That's just me personally. I, I have ran them. I have ran them. I hate them. Yeah. I, me personally, I don't, you know, I've never, uh, not. The thing I, yeah. Some people don't have room for pumps and people like that. But listen, I am, I am power pole to the core. Uh, yeah. When it comes to shallow water anchors, those guys nail it. They have a great design. You don't have any problems. Like it's, they're they're legit. Um, so that one was a bit weird. Um, I haven't seen anything else that's just really been mind blowing though, as far as product announcements. One one I will say this one's funny. We can talk about this one because this is personal to me and you. Um, our buddy Fat Todd um, and this hybrid hunter, the Strike King crankbait. So. This is the rebirth of a crankbait. Basically, it's the same crankbait, right? Same one. Same same one. So this new striking hybrid, it, and it's a great crankbait. It's a great crankbait. I've personally seen it work. You've personally seen it work. It's a great crankbait. Um, Six Sense has one called the Swank. It's very similar that they've had out for very many years. And I've seen so people are so funny in comments that they're just like, yeah, you ripped off Six Sense. <laughs> and... Uh, and <laughs> Raffle, they're, they're getting killed on this thing, yeah. like killed in the comments. And I just want to say to people, they didn't rip anybody off with <laughs> yeah. this at all. They didn't. Like this thing's been around for a while. Then it was discontinued. Now they're bringing it back. But people yeah. are losing their minds over yeah, that in the comments. So. I, I feel like it's. Uh... I haven't read through the comments too much, but I, I did. That. I did this weekend, just looking for stuff for the show. But I, yeah, people are just like you copycats, copy and rapala, you pieces of crap. <laughs> nobody that's really, funny. nobody really got after Todd too much, and that made me sad because I didn't. I wanted somebody to be like Todd Castledine's stupid, and he <laughs> cheats at tournaments. I wanted somebody to say that, but nobody did. But. uh uh, yeah. I want to say this though I did watch the Strike King video And Todd did a great job Explaining that crankbait I will give my buddy Some credit there uh, he, I'm not going to lie I didn't make it that far On the Strike King video Well, <laughs> well <laughs> He uh, he broke it down The video was longer Because they let Todd Break down his favorite crankbait I will say listen. It was it, Listen Listen yeah. It was It was It was long But uh, They got a new spinnerbait Coming out That uh, I think Has got the right size wire And things Uh a tour level spinnerbait they're calling it again but um i think they're trying to step up their spinnerbait game again but i would say six cents but dude we kind of six cents has never been all about icast and they haven't been a, no, in the last couple we, of years and they kind of release things through the years some exciting things and we've got a lot of exciting stuff coming with six cents that you and i've already got our hands on a lot of our a lot of our listeners and, and viewers already have in their hands so yeah uh, and i think too with i think some of these things will make me Released to be able to purchase now, yes. um, in like the the big orders of them, but COVID just messed it all up. Like the catwalk, the speedweight, and the frog were all intended to be released around right now to, mm-hmm. to purchase the full inventory. And there've been little small releases that they've flown in. I mean, you've got some of them, but um, the big launches won't be until this fall. But I will. I I mean, I said this on a post that I made. I throw every frog. I love every frog. I love on Gunnersville. So you got to have every single different kind of frog on Gunnersville. The six cents frog is not a grass frog. It's a, I mean, you've obviously thrown it a ton too, but I went to a place recently and I got to throw that frog and most I've ever thrown it. And the guy that I was with just, he, he kept saying the whole time, dude, I've never seen a frog that walks like that. It and does I walk. It's longer. And me and you were talking about this, but you can walk it like and keep it in one place similar to how you can do, you know, a lot of other brand frogs, but it, it, it moves longer. So if you get yes. it slower and walk it slower, you can move it eight or nine inches. Of, you know, when, when you walk it almost like a spook. 
and it just straight up catches them. Well, that and, and uh, that pop R bite is like that, that big pop R bite where you leave that thing kind of splashing around and, and walking yep. in the same spot, you know, and yep. it almost comes back on itself, and that six cents frog will definitely, definitely do that. Yep. Definitely. Yeah, if you haven't seen Darian's video, was it your last video now at this point? It is. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. truly, like, it's insanity. Of what he yeah, does on a frog in this video and go watch it if you just make sure that you've uh like if you've got heart problems maybe don't watch it because it's just like blow up after blow up after blow up and braid singing and fish getting jacked in the face it's pretty uh it's pretty freaking awesome so all right speaking of awesome darian and i we got a we got a new deal coming up we got a new deal coming up and on thursday and I'm butthurt, by the way, too. All y'all listening, I'm butthurt. When does this get posted? Thursday, Thursday. Thursday. No, 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 no. I'm talking about this podcast. Right now. This podcast is posted on Monday, July 6th, so today. It'll be okay. up this afternoon. Okay. So all y'all know that in three days, y'all will see me butthurt is all I got to say. <laughs> Spoiler alert. But it give you something to look forward to. So on Thursday, he's going to have a video go live, and, and I'm going to have a video go live. And we're calling it. Y'all know how much we go back and forth talking crap. We did Quarantine Catch Fest, which, let's see. Yeah, I won that. And then uh, I had to think about that for a second. Um, we did our best five for the month of April, and I won that. And then we've got this, uh, we got this new tournament series. That was such a subtle one. <laughs> it was. <laughs> I got that in there. That was almost like you were laying on the ground dying, and I just walked by and just like went. You said, uh, yeah, I won that. <laughs> yeah, I won that. And uh, uh, by the way, we started mailing out uh, prizes for that. We're, we're going to finish that this week, I hope. But anyways, uh for all you fans that participate. But this tournament, we're calling it the Show Up and Shut Up Series. And we filmed round one. So we're doing a best of seven, like the World Series, like the NBA Finals. Darian and I can't jump or dunk. So this is the only chance we're ever going to have to, you know, be in a game seven type situation. So this is uh, the best of seven. So whoever wins four games of this, quote, games, wins the entire series. We're going to try to put one of these out a week for the next until it's over. We have filmed episode one, and you're going to see Darian's POV point of view on his channel and my point of view on my channel. It's really fun, but we showed up at a lake we had each never been to, no practice, not really any information whatsoever. We showed up. Shut up, put the boats in the water. We got a 15-minute ride around, and we fished. We fished a five-fish limit at this first one. Each of these will be different. So uh, this Thursday, and I, I may do a premiere on this if my kids don't have a ball game, just to get in the comments. I think it would be fun. But um, So we won't tell you who took game one, but we will tell you Darian's butt hurt. Um, what are you thinking for the next format, Darren? And y'all comment below if you're watching this on YouTube or send me a DM if you're listening going down the road on what format you would like to see. We're going to film another one this week, maybe two. Maybe uh, tomorrow. Maybe tomorrow, hopefully. Um, but we may go three fish format. We may go a big fish format. We may go do a kayak video where we do uh, – Inches, right? Like Dude, the had, most I inches. Had another, I had another cool idea. I think this might not be the best time to do it. We might, we might, this might have to be a next year thing, what I'm thinking of. But I know you've probably not played Call of Duty or, or no. played most I, Call of Duty. But in Call of Duty, there is a game mode called uh, I take it, I a gun game. And so in gun game, you start out with like a knife. And you got to kill somebody with a knife. And then uh, yeah. once you get, as soon as you kill somebody with a knife, you automatically get a pistol. And then as soon as you shoot somebody with a pistol, you automatically get a little shotgun. Well, I think there's like 12 or 15 different guns. And the first person to get to that last gun, it might be a rocket launcher at the end, um, wins. So how cool would it be if we had a set? Obviously, you couldn't do 15 baits in a day. or you no. Nah. You know, but if you did six baits or even a group of eight or nine or ten and you got to pick five of them. Yeah, and I like so, that. You know, you might have a square bill and a spinnerbait and a topwater, but you also might have a, uh, 
a, a live cricket or like a okay you know, like a couple a couple oddballs that, yeah that's not dude dude perfect did something similar but they had they were using more it was more rods and reels with them they used like big deep sea fishing tackle you remember that one it was a really good one yeah yeah but i love the idea of the bait the gun game we'll call it yeah i like that yeah okay well i thought I of that. another format too i'll throw out there and y'all can comment below um do you remember the old Bassmaster Megabucks format? Yeah. Where they went, they mark the off, ten. they've had 10 holes and they mark off a creek on a lake and they said, this is hole one. They give them all a map. And, and when the time changes every hour, you move to the next hole. You cannot leave that area until the hour is up. Dude, that's a thing of beauty. Yeah, I always love that. I always love that format. So we might have to bring that out too. I was thinking that last night. That's a good one. Uh, but the first one was just you go where you want to go. Fifteen minute ride around. We fit. It, it was a blast. We had some weather issues, but we uh, and we may have for the rest of the year. We're, we're filming these in July, which is a really difficult time a lot of times in the South. But the first one showed out. It was really fun. The first lake was a really cool lake in Tennessee. We went to that we had never been to. We're definitely going back to. <laughs> Um, yeah. a lot of fun, but y'all make sure to check it out and, uh, and, and hit Darian up in his comments. Let us know what kind of format you want to see. We're going to try to get all these in the best of seven. And, uh, I mean, I hope it only takes very few games to get it done, you know, but, uh, I, I would love, actually, I would love nothing more than for us to get to film seven of these in a best of seven, but this will not be the only one of these we do because we no. had an absolute blast. I think next year in the spring is just going to make this thing insane. Yes. I would thought of it a little bit late. I would say I would love to go back. I know that would not be fun, but um, I, I'm not even going to get the spoiler alert, but I would love to go back to where we were soon. But I don't think that would be fun. Maybe if we get to game five, maybe <laughs> if. Then we go back. <laughs> if, but. I did, I did find me a little old juice hole. I ain't going to lie. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah. Uh, I got lucky, but uh, but y'all be sure, please go watch that. Please subscribe to the channel if you're not. Subscribe to Darian's channel if you're not. And uh, Darian is 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 that rare YouTuber where he tries to, and I'm trying to do the same thing. Darian does it a lot better than me, but he's meshing the tournament world at slash YouTube world. I feel like because they are two different worlds. And Darian is a tournament angler at heart. And he, he meshes as well. So if you if you don't normally watch YouTube fishing videos, if you're listening to this, go go give him a follow. I think uh, even the fact that he is very stupid, um, and I don't like him very much. I hate his guts. He's he's a good he's a good dude at the same time. So go follow him and uh, D Money. I think that's going to get it for Low Budget Live. I think we I think we had a, a fun conversation, fun thirty minutes, and uh, your post workouts probably kicking in right now. Post workouts crushing. What, uh, what time is this going to post this evening? This will probably post at about uh, as long as it takes. I normally just throw it up as soon as it uploads, honestly, because gotcha. uh, I'm, I'm lucky so, that I'm recording on Monday morning, which is rare. I normally do them on Sundays, but yesterday I didn't really uh, didn't get it done, and yeah. uh, so it, it'll probably be up by lunch. So my only my only ask of of everyone who has made it this far, we've been over thirty one minutes, so. We've probably been probably been recording for about fifty minutes. If you have made it this far tonight, I do have a video that's scheduled that I'm very excited about. It is the video my first time using that kayak I was talking about earlier. Um, it's one of my favorite videos because it's pure like raw emotion of how cool the thing is. Um, and one thing that I think is really cool about Old Town is they told me to give an honest review. They said truly said if you don't like it just say that you don't like it. You don't have to tell us the truth. I mean, you don't have to just say that you don't like it because we sent it to you. So it's a cool video. I had a camera guy. And so it was just, it's an awesome video. And, and I will ask. say sponsor plugs get in the way a lot of times in, in yeah. this sport. They always do. But I will say, and I have no affiliation with old time whatsoever. That is one of the coolest things I've ever seen. Like it, yeah, it is yeah. very, very, he, and Darian's been real jacked about it and has been sending me pictures and video. Like it's a cool freaking product. Exactly, and and the the thing that I thought was cool about Old Town is they're sending you a two to five thousand dollar piece of pro, you know piece of equipment, and truly said if you don't like this, honestly don't don't just say you like it. Like tell us what you don't like. Tell the fans what you don't like. And even about this, when I said there was something that I didn't like, which was the when you when you unscrew the prop, the you know like we have the eliminator prop net for TH, mm-hmm. they have a plastic 
um, little thing to untwist, and it feels like you're going to break it. And I, I even said on that, there's a couple, you know, that, that was one thing I thought was dumb to have this expensive guy got a plastic you yeah. know, nut on there or whatever. But anyhow, it's an awesome video. So that's, that's my recommendation if you guys want to watch a cool video after you listen to this podcast. Go check. Got a lot of kayak fishermen that listen to the uh, show and definitely watch the channel because I see the comments a lot. And uh, y'all go check that out. And D Money, I will uh, I'll get at you later about some other business. Ten and four. Well, let's um, let's try to plan the the game two of the series. Yes, possibly game, game two, three baby. This week. Game two, uh, game three. Oh yeah, yeah, I need to talk to you about game three, about the potential game three because oh, I got yeah. I got a yeah I got a juice a juicy uh, some juicy info yesterday. Okay, well, let's talk later on. Okay, and um, thanks for having me on. Thanks Absolutely, for buddy. Listening. Yeah, and um, I'll I'll watch you soon. All right, D Money, ladies and gentlemen, Darian is fishing right there on the podcast and uh it's fun interviewing friends and uh like friends and family so that that's a good time hope y'all enjoyed that um he's he's a great guy and he's doing really big things in this fishing world so make sure you're following along if you're not thank y'all so much for everything thank y'all for um subscribing to the channel thank you for commenting thank you for liking all this craziness make sure you're subscribed if you are not Make sure you watch The Last Boats and Pros with Carl Jacobson. I really appreciate that. And make sure, go check out my last Garmin Livescope video because I caught some dang biggins, biggins. And uh, the comments have been really fun on that one. Everybody seemed to enjoy it so far. But uh, go check that out. I know it was a holiday weekend. I threw it up on a Thursday. But go go check that out. And then look forward to the Show Up, Shut Up Championship Game 1 this Thursday dropping on YouTube. I'm going to take you out with some... Uh, Luke Duncan, the Luxy Blues. Yeah, me. And I hope y'all have a freaking great week. It's the Triple Threat's birthday on Saturday. It's the Triple Threat's birthday on Saturday. So we will have celebrated a birthday. But y'all, y'all, uh, y'all be thinking about her. All right. Hug your damn mama. Have a good week. We will see y'all next week. Leaving those burdens in red. Does not know my name and I don't care, no, I don't care. Heading my way for another place and I got three good tires and a spare. Just a white line gypsy getting out of Mississippi with just enough gas to get there.